Greetings, grade 12s. So we're moving on now to uh, part two of meiosis, where I'm going to be going much more in depth in terms of the actual phases that are occurring in meiosis. So you need to make sure that you've gone through the previous video, which discusses a lot of the terminology related to meiosis. Um, if you don't, uh, you're going to get really lost as you go through this video. Uh, so please make sure that you've gone through that to start with. So before I get into that, let's just have a bit of a recap talking about mitosis. Remember the normal, the first cell division that we did, which was basically just creating two identical daughter cells, normal cell division, creating new cells. The phases that we would have would have been interphase, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. Now, the nice thing is when we talk about meiosis is those phases stay the same. It is still the same words that we use. It is still prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. There's also interphase that happens a little bit before in the beginning, and you do still have cytokinesis, which is the actual splitting of the cytoplasm. But as I said in the previous video, we can't just have one division for meiosis one. We have to have two divisions. So because we have two, we still keep the names the same, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. We now have to add a number, either a one or a two, to indicate which phase of meiosis we are in. So we will have prophase one, metaphase one, anaphase one, telophase one, and then prophase two, metaphase two, anaphase two, and telophase two. So you can use normal numbers if you want. You can use Roman numerals, so I or II. As long as it's fine. You just can't refer to these individual phases without a number when you're dealing with meiosis. So, let's go into it. This is meiosis 1. So now meiosis 1 where, is where a lot of the magic and a lot of the fun stuff happens. So it's a lot more in-depth that we need to go in terms of the different phases here. So we're going to go into each of these very in-depth so we get an understanding of what's happening. So as with mitosis, the first phase that we have is interphase. So before this particular cell is going to be divided into its gamete, we still have to have the DNA replication that's occurring within this interphase stage that occurs here. So we duplicate the DNA. So then we move into prophase one. So the thing with prophase one is this is where a lot of the interesting stuff happens. So remember from the previous video, I said that when you get the characteristic X shape, the X shape is when you have had the DNA duplicated. But in prophase one of meiosis, you are going to have homologous chromosomes aligning. So for example, call this chromosome one from your mom and chromosome one from your dad. They are literally going to be physically attaching to each other. So homologous chromosomes, the ones that are coding for the same genes that are pretty much the same length, are going to physically attach to each other. Now, you have, if you noticed on the blue chromosome here, you've got capital ABC and capital ABC. Why are they the same letters? Because I have duplicated this DNA. I've made it exactly the same. So they are coding for, they are the same genes. But on the red chromosome, I have small letter A, B, and C on either side. So the letters are the same, but the versions are different, either capital or small. So they are coding for the same protein, the same gene is being coded for, but they are just different versions. That's what we mean by homologous chromosomes, where at the same place they are coding for the same characteristic. Now, what? The, so that's the first thing. In prophase one, homologous pairs are going to align with each other. And the second most important thing is this process of crossing over. And it literally is called crossing over. You can refer to it as crossing over. But what we mean by crossing over is that there is an exchange of genes. So they are literally going to switch places, exchange, switch out one for another. So to see where this occurs, look at the middle one over here. You can see that these two chromosomes are physically touching at this point. Now, one of those points where they touch is referred to as a chiasmata. So a point where the two chromosomes touch is a chiasmata. If we're looking for the plural, if it's more than one, it is chiasma. So just not chiasmatas, just chiasma, take the TA away. But what happens at this point where the two of them touch, you see happens in the third picture. The colors have switched. And as such, the letter types have switched. So now this side where it would normally have 
capital letters now has a small letter, and this where it would normally have small letters now has a big letter. So what you can see is this chromatid is now genetically different to this chromatid. And this chromatid is genetically different to this chromatid. So we have four completely different chromatids within this homologous pair. Yeah, so that's important to remember. So that is meiosis, uh, so prophase one for meiosis one. You have homologous pairs are attaching, they're aligning, and we have crossing over. Then we move to metaphase one. So what would we normally expect in metaphase to occur? We would normally expect that the chromosomes would line up on the equator. Now that does happen, but in metaphase one, in meiosis, they line up in their homologous pairs. So instead of lining up chromosomes 1 to 46, it will be 1 to 23 on one side and the homologous paired chromosome 1 to 23 on the other side. So it's two rows of chromosomes that you will have in metaphase 1. What you can also see in this picture here is you've got purple with a bit of green and green with a bit of purple. So they are genetically different. And the important thing here as well is that it does make a difference which side the chromosomes are going to be facing. So it doesn't always have to be that all the purples are on one side. So you can see here, the mainly green one is now on this side with the mainly purple one on this side. And now it does make a difference because if the green one goes to this side and the purple goes to this side, your cell will be different if the purple went to this side and the green went to this side. Now, you don't have to worry about the knowing which exact combinations occur because there are essentially then millions of combinations that can occur based on, and again, it would be happen if this was switched the other way around, etc. It does make a difference. So just know that this variation of alignment is important. We call it independent assortment. Becomes an important thing later on. So, that is metaphase one, homologous pairs line up in two rows. Then we get to anaphase one. What would we normally expect to occur in anaphase? Well, the chromosomes would split, basically. But that doesn't happen in anaphase one. Instead, we have the homologous pairs separating. So, if you notice here, this sister chromatid is still attached to this sister chromatid. This sister chromatid is still attached to this sister chromatid. The separation has occurred between the homologous pairs. So the homologous pairs are separating, but the sister chromatids are staying together. And then they are moving to their separate poles. So that is anaphase one. Homologous pairs are separating. And that's really the main stuff that happens in meiosis 1. So yes, we do have telophase 1 and cytokinesis, where we are going to now have two cells that are forming. So I've gone from 1 to 2. Do you notice as well, in this cell, how many chromosomes are present? There are four. So if I count from the centromeres, 1, 2, 3, 4. So that is the four centromere, four centromeres, four chromosomes. How many are going to be in each cell here in this telophase one? It's going to be two in each cell. One, two, and one, two. So we've gone from four chromosomes to two. And the genetic composition of each of these is unique. So that is meiosis one. Main things about meiosis one. We then move on to meiosis 2. So you see I've got two rows of things happening here. Why is that the case? Because if you remember, I ended off here in meiosis 1 where I was forming two cells. So essentially what's happening in this row is also happening in this row, identically, exactly the same. The only difference being the genetic composition of these chromosomes is different. So note the amount of red and blue on each chromosome in each cell it makes a difference. So, there is no interphase two. There is no phase where the chromosomes are then going to all the way uncoil and then have to recoil. No, we go straight into prophase two, which is the only thing that's really happening is that the centrioles are forming the spindle fibers again. So we're now reforming these spindle fibers, but the chromosomes pretty much keep their shape, really. 
Then, met all the rest of this follows as you would normally expect a mitosis to occur. So, in metaphase 2, the chromosomes line up individually. There's no homologous pairs now, it's just individually, line, individually lining up. The only difference being now is that there is only 23 chromosomes in this cell and 23 chromosomes in this cell. So, they line up 1 to 23, one row. 1 to 23, 1 row, as you would normally expect in a metaphase. In anaphase, 2, as you would expect in mitosis, the sister chromatids are being separated. Sister chromatids are separated. Sister chromatids are separated. Remember, in meiosis 1, anaphase 1, it was the homologous pairs that were separated. Now in anaphase 2, it is sister chromatids that are being separated. And then in telophase 2, in cytokinesis, we now have four cells that are going to be produced. So I go from 2 to 4. And each of these cells has its own unique genetic composition. The amount of red, blue on the different chromosomes is completely different. So I have four genetically different, and how many chromosomes are in each? Two. Therefore, it is a haploid number, because in the original cell there was four. So four is the diploid number here. Two is the haploid number. So, just as a sum up comparison of a difference between meiosis 1 and meiosis 2, here's a nice little comparative table comparing what happens in meiosis 1 and meiosis 2 for each of the phases. Make sure you understand this difference, because what this will help you with is if you are given a picture of a phase of meiosis, you will then be able to identify what is happening in that phase based mainly on the differences that are occurring between these two phases. Also, if you get given several pictures of several cells at different stages, and you have to put them in order, we'll practice doing this in another video, you will be able to know based on the differences whether it's in meiosis 1, meiosis 2, and what particular phase is occurring. So make sure that you pause, make sure you have an understanding of this table. So one more final little roundup of the phases. So looking particularly at the chromosome number and the chromatid number. So if this is the original cell that I started with, how many chromosomes are in this cell? So in this particular picture, there are one, two, three, four. But in a normal human cell, we would have 46. Two pairs of, tw so 2 times 23, 2n. What is the chromatid number? It is then 46. Then when I go from interphase, interphase I have my DNA duplication. So I have my characteristic X shape. Because now my DNA has duplicated. How many chromosomes do I have? I still have four in this image. I still have 46 in a normal human cell. But I now have 92 chromatids. So if you were to count the chromatids in this particular cell, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. But four chromosomes. So in a normal cell, 46 chromosomes, 92 chromatids. After meiosis 1, remember meiosis 1 is reduction division. I am reducing the number of chromosomes. So I have gone from 4 chromosomes in the cell to 2 in this image. 2 chromosomes. In a normal human cell, I go from 46 chromosomes to 23 chromosomes in each cell. But I still have 46 chromatids. So in this picture, although there's two chromosomes, I have one, two, three, four chromatids. 23 chromosomes in a human, 46 chromatids. I can't have these two cells then becoming the things that combine to form a zygote because then I will have 92 chromatids. I can't have 92 chromatids in a normal cell. I have to have the same number of chromatids and the same number of chromosomes for it to be a functional cell. 
therefore I have to have my second division of meiosis, the copying division, which then gets rid of the extra copy. Now I have 23 chromosomes and 23 chromatids. So in this, I only have two chromosomes, no extra chromatids, 23 and 23. Now, some people may want to ask, well, why don't you, when you just go straight from here, just divide by two? You know, why do we not just have this division? The problem is, is that it, it becomes a problem that we can't have enough variation that is occurring. This crossing over is actually very important for us. And also the fact that we create four cells is much more efficient for us as a human. So remember, you make a, a male will make millions of sperm and in an ejaculation, it will be millions of sperm, but only one egg gets fertilized. So females only make one egg and only one sperm fertilizes that. So we have to increase the chances. So both because if we didn't have the DNA replication, we wouldn't have this effective crossing over and this effective variation. And we wouldn't be producing enough of a number to sustain our population, essentially. So there are other reasons to get a little bit more complicated, but it can't just be a fact of, oh, well, let's just take this cell and divide it in half. Doesn't work like that. Okay, so please make sure you go through, especially this table of comparison here. Understand, no draw pictures because you will have to be able to draw pictures relating to this. Sketch them. Have your own understanding to know what is the difference between these two phases of meiosis, what is occurring in each one, so that you can answer the more applied questions or explain what is actually happening and know what's going on in this meiosis. I uh, hope you enjoyed that, guys. Keep, keep studying nice and hard. I'm going to do another couple more videos on meiosis just to make sure we fully understand what is happening here. Thanks very much, guys.